Hey, what's up? A little solo episode for you. I wanted to come in with a a quick espresso shot of what I've been sensing in people and also myself recently as I've been in dialogue with strangers, friends, and recognizing that, you know, when we make the journey and we say yes to change, to changing our relationships, to recovering from heartbreak, to feeling lost in our job, feeling lost in our life, that we have to turn towards a different type of guidance system. You know, the life we know is predictable, right? The The path is in our head. We know the path that everyone goes down. I can look up how to become an accountant. I can look up how to do certain things. And because they're paths that are often walked, there is a roadmap. But there's a different type of sensing that we have to develop when we're coming back to our intuition, we're feeling lost. And you know, the thing I remind myself of all the time when I feel lost and I feel like I'm coming out of those circumstances and that way of being and I still don't have the answers are not all of them. And it's so human to want all of them now, especially in a society and a culture that is about urgency and getting the thing. And I remind myself that when you feel lost, it is actually a really beautiful thing because it means we're about to be found on some level. It means that we're also saying yes to finding an answer, finding a solution, finding the path. You know what I was saying is that the path is illuminated when it's walked, right? When everyone is walking the same path, it's easy to just follow it. But when you're walking your own and you're asking for guidance from a mentor, from God, from the universe, from whatever it is, soul, whatever your language is, it's a different type of guidance. It's not a vision anymore. It's a feeling. And we have to be reminded that we live in such a heady world. We live in such an intellectual place that to go to the heart, right? They say the longest journey you'll ever take is from the head to the heart, but it's fucking close, right? It's only, you know, depending how tall you are, shorter for other people, longer for other people, but it's it's not a long journey, but it is on a conceptual basis. It is on an emotional basis. And that journey of being willing to take guidance from a place other than the intellectual logical is also a grieving process. You know, when you recognize that you want to figure out how to love more, be open more, have better boundaries, there's a grief that accompanies that. And that is the grief in the seeking of the knowledge that we have always craved more or there has always been more available to us. So whether you're watching this or listening to this, I want to acknowledge you wherever you're at because we're always in some form of transition. We're always in some form of transformation. We're always in some place of being asked to be receptive to something that we often resist, to information that we often resist. But true liberation and power is not found in pretending things aren't true or ignoring the messages we're getting. You know, we think, well, if I don't deal with that, then I'll just, I won't have to deal with anything. I'll just be fine. But we know that in the end, the things we're running from will always catch up to us. And it is a different way of being to orient towards the sensations we're getting. To just be curious and become an explorer of what our intuition is saying and of what our feelings are saying, of what our heart is yearning for. You know, these aren't by accident. You know, I think one of the sort of failures of humanity today is this idea that you're just a pile of cells, like a biological lump of cells that just happens to be here by happenstance. You know, that you just happen to have gotten lucky and a couple people humped and made you and here you are dealing with this existential conundrum of like, well, I'm just a pile of cells, so what am I here for? When really, when you wake up to the true miraculous nature that you are on this planet to do something, like it is, the the odds of you being here listening to this video and me being here at this time too, I mean, it is, you gotta think about. It's fucking crazy. You don't even have to be good at math to come up with crazy numbers, right? And so we can either orient towards our lives that it is just happenstance and it's just, oh, like, what are we doing here anyways? Like fatalistic idea. Or 
You can be like, holy shit, I'm divinely here. I'm here. I'm brought here due to divine intelligence. I have a divine path. I have a purpose. And if you've been living a life that's about checking the boxes, that's very different than living a life about following the path of what are you're called towards and both serve us, right? Like any moment you wake up to living a possibly different life or to finally answering the calls that you've maybe been taught to ignore, they're all perfect, right? Like everything that got us to this moment right here, right now is absolutely perfect and divine, right? And there's really no other way to look at it because we're here. We can't change what brought us here, but we can change how we orient our lives moving forward and how we turn towards information and feelings moving forward. So I say all this because I want to acknowledge you for saying yes to whatever it is you're saying yes to, for asking the questions and letting your life live out the answer to those questions, to be open and, and remind yourself that, I forget who says it, but yeah, Francis Weller, I remember him quoting it, saying that the soul moves at a glacial pace and we live in a world that is about quick, 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 answer, 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 solution, 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 get my need met, get my need met, Uber Eats, my soul answers, you know, like we want everything now. But actually, when you start to ask questions like, what am I here for? What's the answer? All that slid up for you is the next step. And it's letting go of the need to know all the answers that the answer that you need right now can be clear and show up for you right in front of you. So there's nothing more to the message other than that. And whoever needs to hear it will hear it and you'll hear it in whatever way you need to hear it. And I want to you know, just say to you that life is challenging and being a human is challenging and it's complex and there's so many things to negotiate and think about and consider. And you know, at the end of the day, I really believe the purpose of being on this planet is to learn how to become the best version of ourselves and to do that through the challenges we have relationally, the challenges we have in life, the challenges we're presented on our path. And we can either see them as a way of happening for us or to us. And, you know, this is not to negate the experience of being a victim of things, but to say, how do I grow from things? You know, it's much like that saying that it's not our fault what happens to us, but it is our responsibility what we do with it. This podcast episode is brought to you in part by Organifi. One of my favorite products from Organifi is their gold chocolate, and it comes out seasonally. So it is in season. And what it is is a superfood hot chocolate that is so damn healthy that you can actually drink it every day, and, and you probably should. It has 10 superfoods that are ideal for rest and relaxation, so it's great to have at night. Great to replace dessert. It's 100% USDA certified organic. It is low sugar. And I think that's one thing about hot chocolate or any, or hot cacao. Like we don't want to give it to our kids or drink it all the time because it's so packed with sugar. The average one has 200 calories, six grams of fat and 25 grams of sugar. So the gold chocolate from Organifi only has 23 calories, less than two grams of fat and one gram of sugar. I mean, this stuff is so delicious and it's going to hit the sweet tooth spot. And as many of you know, I'm curbing the sweet tooth spot. And it supports a better night rest so you can wake up refreshed. So if this sounds like something you definitely want to try and you should try, go to Organifi.com slash create the love and you will save 20% off station wide. So that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I dot com slash create the love for 20% off. This stuff is absolutely delicious and all of their products I just absolutely love. So if you haven't had the green juice too, that's a great way to get not too sweet of a green juice that you just take and mix with water again. Super easy, much like the chocolate gold. So how can we show up to life taking full ownership for what is ours now? And all the knowledge that we have, that we have yet to implement in our lives. Like think about how much you know that you still have not put into your behaviors. How many things are you currently doing that are not actually productive or healthy for you or your relationships or your body or whatever it is? And we just have to decide in a moment, like, it's changing. I'm ready. I'm going to answer the call. I'm going to be patient. Because when we say yes to wanting to find an answer, it means that we are learning to move our lives towards a solution, to let the answers show up as we do, right? That's the key. You can't just expect it all to get solved. 
you've got to participate in the solving. So with all that said, much love.